Allow myself to introduce myself. Hey everybody. He's Austin Powers. He's Dr. Evil. I'm number two. She's Vanessa Kensington. No wait, that ain't it. We are not, definitely not, international men of mystery. But we are Vikings Report with Drew, Chris, and Ted. How are ya? The details of my life are quite inconsequential. Yeah, baby, yeah! One crushed velvet suit. One fuzzy <laughs> laced cravat. One pair of Italian shoes. Bones are in all boys. How are you guys doing? We're off to London, England. Tottenham Spur, Hot Spur, Dick Spur, whatever it's called. I am doing great. We are 4 0, and we got another big preview this week with the Jets. We're going to talk football, and I always I look forward to this day of sitting and chatting with you dudes what are you guys doing sitting here talking football with you guys getting ready to wake up not as early as uh, when we were in california not uh, having to cover these games but uh, early enough because it's uh it's 8 30 a.m god's time we got football on uh, sunday mornings we can uh, have some breakfast some uh, tea and strumpets oh groovy smashing yay capitalism <laughs> and watch some football groovy baby yeah <laughs> <laughs> i spent a little bit of time in england i, I was never stationed over there but it's a cool country, very historic. The very first country that the Vikings, the actual Vikings raided, uh, Lindis Farm back in, I don't know, I, I think I was two when that happened. <laughs> Drew, you might have been four when they raided Lindis Farm. That's how old we are. By the way, just so everybody's clear, I would normally we say hi to Ruby, but she's very busy this evening. She has like real work stuff, but she was very gracious enough. So instead of saying, allow myself to introduce myself, I'm Richard Cunningham, and this is Drew's wife, Oprah. Be. We can't do that because she's busy, but she's she's in the background, and she's going to do all the magic to make the show and make us look good. So, hi, Ruby. How are you? But, yeah, so Vikings travel to England. Do you guys like the international games? I'm kind of done, and they've worn out their welcome to me. I'm done. No, I mean, some of these surfaces, they're not built for football. I mean, we saw that in Brazil with the Packers and the Eagles, kind of a slip and slide, not a great playing surface that's conducive to uh, the NFL game. And, you know, these are soccer stadiums over in Germany and the UK. So, no, and just the logistics of it all. I know the NFL is trying to expand and get international and whatnot, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the whole thing. Drew, you're a big fan of going, going international, aren't you? No, 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 it's not working. No. Isn't that what being an international <laughs> man of mystery is all about? Saucer of milk, table two. Wow. <laughs> Why can't they get the grass right on these stadiums and the, the outside the cut? Why is it always the bad surface? I don't get uh, what is so hard about having good grass. Well, you, you, I think of us three are the grass expert. I don't know. Oh, behave. <laughs> Last time I saw good grass was in Amsterdam. Right now we're heading into the heart of Amsterdam, which is known as the weed capital of Europe. They don't have good grass. <laughs> but other than that, these surfaces are all terrible. It's part of my intangibles tonight. But man, I can't believe how well the Vikings. What a what a groovy, groovy record we have so far, baby. <laughs> Four knows nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Hey Ted, there you are. Yeah. There you are. Hey, do I know you? <laughs> no, but that's where you are. You're there. <laughs> Before we get going, got to talk about the two websites near and dear to our heart. First one is always Purple Pain Forums. It's purplepainforums.com, our home away from home on the internet. Head on over there, sign up, get an account, start commenting. Great community of folks, really smart community of fans, not the vitriol and sarcastic comebacks and just general crappiness of most social media platforms and sites you might find on Facebook, Vikings fan sites, et cetera, that are not very well moderated. Purple Pain Forums is very well moderated. Great contests, great moderators, great topics. So head on over there, purplepainforums.com. And then if you want just a one-stop shop for all your Minnesota Vikings news, that would be the Daily Norseman. That's dailynorseman.com. SB Nation's site for Minnesota Vikings news and opinion, headed by our very own 
Diet Coke of Evil, Mr. Christopher Gates, who's been running the site since its inception in 2006. He was cryogenically unfrozen then, just like Austin Powers. You've been cryogenically frozen for 30 years. Who are these people? The shouting is a temporary side effect of the unfreezing process. He let me write for the site for quite a while. I got burned out of writing. He's still there. I don't know how you do it, man. I, hats off. Ted used to make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. <laughs> when he was insolent, we placed him in a burlap sack and beat him with reeds. <laughs> the reason I left is because I asked for one million Dollars. Don't you think we should maybe ask for more than a million dollars? A million dollars isn't exactly a lot of money these days. <laughs> <laughs> and sharks with frickin' lasers on their heads. Lasers. Throw me a frickin' bone here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I did pretty well in week one. Nobody cares about your fantasy team. I did pretty well in week one, and I've kind of stunk ever since. And then Ruby did pretty poorly. Every time I talk smack, it comes back to bite me in the rear end, and it's come back full circle, and I've been terrible ever since. Drew, how are we doing so far through four weeks of Nobody Cares About Your Fantasy Team? Through four weeks? You know, you took the opening week, and we never heard the end of it until it was the end of it. <laughs> you took week one. Ruby took weeks two and three. And then I took this last week, which is kind of interesting because nobody picked my team. Yeah. <laughs> so if we throw this little chart up here, you can see how fast, why we did the new scoring this year, Ted, because the number one person fell to number eight because he, he didn't pick the top team. He picked Chris, which Chris hit the injury bug that he had two guys out with injury. So it's just an example to show how it could change hands, which is better than last year because it was hard, like you said. It's hard to catch up a little bit, but I had a big day from Nico Collins, and I was the first person to cross the 100-point yard mark. That's where we stand right now. The standings are moving along. We get a lot of more people playing this year, which is very cool. That's what happened with the week. So you could say, you could say Dr. Evil stole Chris's mojo. I have his mojo. <laughs> but I won, so I'll, we're going to go with a little of that and uh, look forward to week five. So how do we play? Well, I'll tell you what. We got a video. We recorded it. And Ruby's going to play it right now. So, hey, Ruby. As always, it is a standard DPR scoring format. Every week this year, Drew, Chris, Ruby, and I will pick one quarterback, one running back, two wide receivers, and one tight end. Every week you will pick the team you think has the best chance of winning. Put your entry in the comments below here. Don't hit us up on our Facebook page. Don't hit us up on X or Twitter or whatever Elon Musk is calling it. Every time we pick a player, we can only pick that player one time throughout the course of the season. So it's done. So if we don't pick a player that player gets hurt for the season, too bad for us. We can't use it. We don't know the picks beforehand, but we some picks in. And we don't pick the players that are playing on the Thursday night game because that might have one team that you folks might pick sort of an unfair advantage in case they go off and get like 40 or 50 points, whatever the case may be. The big change to this year, in years past, we've given you three points for first place, two points for second place, one point for third. This year you get all the points that you would get in a standard PPR format week if you play fantasy football. So, for example, if you pick my team and I score 75 points in one week, and then you pick Chris's team and they score 75 points in week two, you have 150 points throughout two weeks. And that keeps going throughout the season. Conversely, if you pick like Drew's team and they only score 10 points, and then Ruby's team and they score like 300 points, then you have 310 points. It gives you a chance to catch up if you kind of fall behind. Whereas in past seasons, if you weren't doing so well, it was kind of hard to catch up. So this year you can kind of fall back in the back pretty fast. So standard PPR scoring format all season and you improve points throughout the year. You can find a little bit about the season on VikingSport.com. We'll keep that updated for us. And we've got a really awesome prize for our grand prize winner this year. It is a Justin Jefferson jersey. Put it up on the board for championship. Second place is a nice to find digs. Vikings jersey as well. All right. So there's your fantasy. Nobody cares about your fantasy team picks for the week. Hopefully I'll, I'll get back on, on the winning side. Suck you to me, baby. It's really quite breathtaking. Look, we got a big show. We got some Vikings news, some information, real positive injury information for the Vikings this week. Then we've got our preview. And then Drew's got a, a really cool milestone. No trivia this week. We're going to do the milestone uh, in weeks that we don't have trivia. But before we have all of that information, Mr. Drew Bunting, what time is it? Ted, oh, I'm cooler than you are. So why don't you take care of any kind of groovy problems, head to London, England, and light this candle. He's right. Sergeant Major, head on over to Big Ben and light this candle. <laughs> he surely is. Welcome to my underground lair. And light this candle. Bring in the fan box. 
All right, I'm cooler than you are. Why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Let's light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. <laughs> Release the fembots! Okay. <laughs> now in the globe! <laughs> Frickin' lasers. Frickin' lasers on their heads. <laughs> oh, God. I forgot that the guy that fell over, I'm badly burned. That was Will Ferrell. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this week's Alan Parsons Project. <laughs> <laughs> progressive yeah. rock band from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Project Banana Rama is going to be incredible. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of Oh my god, we we're here. so dumb. Guys! Oh. Way to go, a hole! Alright, Vikings use information. So, Ivan Pace Jr., the undrafted free agent linebacker from last year who took the NFL by storm, had a great rookie season, picked up where he left off at the beginning of this year, has missed the last two games. He's coming back this week, he'll play. That's very good news, obviously, but the really big news for Minnesota Vikings fans that we've been wanting to hear is that tight end TJ Hawkinson, who suffered a torn ACL and MCL, I believe, towards the end of last season in the, I think, second to last game of the year against Detroit. His practice window has opened. He has uh, 21 days, or the Vikings now have 21 days to either activate him to the uh, 53-man roster or put him on season-ending injured reserve. The general consensus or belief is that he's not going to play against the Jets. They have the bye week, but he will probably be activated for the Vikings' next game coming out of the bye. Chris, does that make sense to you? And if it does, I got some stats I want to throw out, but I want to get your guys' opinion on this. Take it away. It, it kind of makes sense. I mean, if I think they said during the press conference the window's officially going to open Friday, so they've got uh, 21 days from Friday to make that decision. The only thing I'd be a little wary about is they have the bye, and then they have their game against Detroit on that next Sunday. And then they've got the short turnaround because they've got Thursday night football the next week. And so I don't know if you want to try to make him play two games in four or five days or whatever it is. Maybe, I don't know if he might not come back for the Detroit game, but come back for the Rams game or wait until after the Rams game. But no, th this is a pretty solid spot for him to, uh, to get back. They said he's going to travel with the team. He's going to practice over in the UK, but he's going to have three weeks from Friday to get activated. Drew? Go right along with what Chris was saying. Be nice to have him back against the Lions, being it's his old team, and it looks like that's going to be our divisional rival all the way down the, the mark here. But I forgot about the short turnaround. I wouldn't be surprised if he, of course, not going to play Sunday, doesn't play in the Lions, and comes back for that Rams game. When he's 100%, he's 100% and ready to go. So I just wouldn't do it this Sunday, being we playing some kind of weird surface of a field after an ACL. So, yeah, pretty much what Chris said. Kevin O'Connell says he looks good. He's rehabbed like an animal. It's just getting him back into football shape. I think if he can play and he's ready to go against Detroit, he's going to play because I think he wants to take some measure of revenge against Detroit because Kirby Joseph of the Lions is the guy that ended his season last year. That's a great point. And I'll tell you this. I was looking up some numbers today. I got a tasty, tasty tidbit for you gentlemen. Last year through four games, TJ Hawkinson had 25 catches for 203 yards and two touchdowns. Minnesota Vikings tight end as a whole, when you throw in Josh Oliver's catches, he had seven catches for 59 yards. They had 32 catches for 262 yards through four games. You know what those numbers are this year? <laughs> seven catches for 66 yards. Now, it hasn't hurt them because the Vikings are 4-0. It probably will not affect them this week against the Jets. And as we get into our preview, I'll explain my rationale why. But that Lions game is going to be huge. If you saw them on the Monday night game against Seattle, they're going to have to go score for score against the Lions, I believe. And TJ Hawkinson is going to be a guy that they're really going to need. I think if he is able to play, and we've said going into the season, the Vikings are going to need to find some kind of production at the tight end position, and they haven't found it yet. So I think if they can get Hawkinson back for that Lions game, I think they're going to try and play him. And maybe not play him or really limit his snaps against the Rams on that Thursday game because the Rams don't look to be all that good this year. 
No, I mean, the division game is obviously the most important one with tiebreakers and that sort of thing. So we'll see how they want to play this, but I know they want to have him for the entirety of the season as well. So yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they uh, how they play this whole thing. It's scary to think how good the Vikings are going to be when they get that guy back too. That's just more firepower. I can't wait to see it. For the New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Aaron Rodgers, they lost to the Denver Broncos. I don't know if you saw the stat line for Bo Nix. Oh. Why must I be surrounded by freaking idiots? He had a terrible game. He had under 70 yards passing. I think he had under a 50% completion rate. The Jets still lost to the Broncos. Head coach Robert Salah said, hey, I, I think we might have an issue with Aaron Rodgers' cadence, the way he calls out his cadence on the on the line of scrimmage. And Rodgers said, well, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's everybody else, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm surprised he would say that kind of thing. And now he's on the injury list as questionable with a, a knee issue. I would have thought it would have been a body part between the waist and the knee. Uh, <clears throat> starts with a V, but that's just me. And my poetry. A lot of vagina. But, uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> you guys talk about this. I want to come back to Rodgers and, and how I kind of perceive him in this day and age with the Jets. Do you think this is going to affect him at all? How dare you break wind? I didn't know it was your turn, baby. Um, <laughs> he's going to play. He's not what he used to be. The cadence thing, I was reading into that. There's a little bit of jabbing going back and forth the jets are a mess again they were picked to be a playoff team i heard jets fans saying that that denver game was the worst jets game in 20 years so they're not heading in the right direction sala probably doesn't care he's not gonna have a job at the end of the year so i think their only chance to beat us like the packers had with jordan love is to play i don't even who's the other quarterback there i don't even know i'd have to look up their depth chart to see who, who else they even have on the roster tyrod taylor tyrod taylor's their uh, backup that's well, not scary yeah. either. At this point, Chris Gates, I don't give a what quarterback plays against the Vikings. They're all doomed. No. Yeah, with the way the Vikings defense has looked, and you know, a lot has been made on social media today about how the uh, the Vikings are last in the league and passing yardage allowed. But, you know, it's because they've been ahead pretty much all of every game. We talked about it last week. They've still trailed for a grand total of about three and a half minutes in four games. They never trailed against the Niners. They never trailed against the Texans. They never trailed against Green Bay. And, uh, you know, when you're ahead all the time, teams are going to throw the ball. They're, they're currently on pace to face, I believe someone said, uh, the most pass attempts in a season that any defense has ever faced. And that's because they're ahead all the time. More passing attempts are going to be more yards. It, if you look at all the other stats as far as uh, passing goes, the Vikings defense is outstanding. So, yeah, the yards don't matter. I don't get it. Look at the Chiefs every year. They're in the bottom third of the past defense ratings, and they're always in the Super Bowl, it seems like. I saw this statistic on Twitter. Uh, since you guys are talking about this, it's a tweet by at Prime Lewis 23 We'll put this up on the screen. It goes directly to what you guys were saying. 75 of the Daniel Jones 186 passing yards came after the Giants were down 28-6. to six. Brock Purdy, 167 of his 319 passing yards came after going down 20-7. to seven. C.J. Stroud. 121 of the 215 yards he had came after going down 21 nothing. 320 of the 389 passing yards Jordan Love had came down after going down 28 nothing. Everybody talked about Kirk Cousins being a garbage time quarterback. I don't really think he was, at least the last two years for sure, maybe three in Minnesota. That is the epitome of garbage time stats right there. If you want sure. if you want my humble opinion. So absolutely yeah. right. The Vikings defense has turned every game into garbage time. Yeah. Now, as to Rodgers, I thought last year Rodgers had a chance to be Brett Favre for the Vikings in 2009. I thought he was still a good football player, and then he he ruptured his Achilles, what, three or four plays into the season. This year, I look at, at Aaron Rodgers as like the 2010 version of Brett Favre. I kind of made it akin also to like Muhammad Ali at the tail end of his career. Ali is one of the all-time great heavyweight fighters. But if you remember his last couple fights, particularly the one against, I think it was Larry Holmes, where he just had nothing left. And Larry Holmes was literally begging the ref to stop the fight because Larry Holmes idolized Muhammad Ali growing up. And he didn't want to punish Ali anymore. Ali just had nothing left in the tank. He just didn't have any left. I don't think Rodgers is at that point of Ali's career. 
but he's getting there. So I don't think Rodgers was the same guy he was three years ago. And three years ago, I didn't think Rodgers was the guy he was in his prime. And, and he's coming off that Achilles injury, and now he's got this knee issue. How bad that is, I don't know. But this is not working out, obviously, as the way everybody envisioned when, when Rodgers went to the Jets. No, and I mean, you talk about the way last his first season in New York ended. He lasted all of four plays, and then he was gone for the year. And, you know, he had the same injury that Kirk Cousins did. I think he elected not to have uh, any kind of surgery, or he had an alternate kind of surgery different from what Cousins had. And there was there was talk of him coming back at the end of last year if the Jets would have been remotely competitive or whatever. I don't know how much I buy into that, but, you know, you got to wonder if, you know, if he had just had the regular – surgery if he would be better off than he is now but he didn't and I, I think you're exactly right he's not what he was even a couple of years ago anymore no i don't think it's true what are your yeah, thoughts on that doesn't strike the fear into any kind of secondary he doesn't strike any fear into brian flores he's in for a world of problems he's still kind of crafty and sneaky in the pocket but it's way less potent than it used to be he's gonna have problems this weekend but i think he's to the tail end of his career all right, so that'll do it for our uh, news. It seems the knighting ceremony isn't the only time your daddy let you down. Remember that day at the academy? ain't family feud and I sure as hell ain't Richard Dawson <laughs> throw me a freaking bone here all right intangibles which is things you can't see Chris you got any intangibles for no I mean technically it's a home game for the Vikings you know they have the bye coming up next week I don't know if the Jets are taking their bye after this one or not but you know, well, all the times Aaron Rodgers kind of ran roughshod over them when he was with the Packers, they would love to uh, to get a measure of revenge here and kind of kind of send the Jets into a bit deeper spiral uh, going toward the end of the season here, or to the midpoint of the season, I should say. But pretty much every advantage points toward the Vikings in this one. They're better coached. They're more talented. Sam Darnold's playing the best football of his life, and it's the revenge game for Sam Darnold, too, because... Uh, this is the team that took him number three overall in 2018 and threw him into an absolute mess. And then they gave up on him after a couple of years. So he's uh, he's going to want to uh, to prove them wrong, just like he's been proving everyone wrong. So, yeah, we, we got to give the Vikings the check mark here, too. Drew? I totally forgot about that. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, being that he was drafted into that purgatory over there in New York. The surface of the field, that's an intangible for me because you never know what you're going to face. If we just stop playing in these different countries and keep all the games on U.S. soil, we'll be fine. How about instead of growing the game across the pond or growing the game worldwide, how about fixing your freaking officiating, Mr. Bigglesworth? That officiating in that Vikings game was terrible. The NFL worries about all this other crap, you guys, but their officiating sucks. That's a different story for a different day. The intangibles, I'm going to give it to the Vikings because the intangibles are the only thing that can beat them. The miracles, the only thing that can that really can beat them this week. And we always give the weather, Ted. Game time weather for kickoff from Tottenham Hotspur. The stadium kickoff is 61 degrees, 50% chance of showers. But if you check another website, also report sunny with no showers. So it could be showers, it could be not. But 61 degrees, even if it's raining, I think the Vikings will get the, my intangibles done. Sam Darnold was drafted by the Jets third overall in 2018. Played for them for three years and was deemed a bust. Now, he did not, he never played for Robert Salah. He played under Adam Gase, who might be the modern day rich co tight, one of the worst coaches ever. But it was Salah that made the decision to move on from Sam Darnold. Traded him to Carolina, said, time for a new beginning. So if you don't think that's not something Sam Darnold is being motivated by this week, you're wrong. Everybody says forgive and forget. Vengeance of mine, saith the Lord, if you're a religious person. But revenge can be a powerful motivating factor. And spite and getting back at people you want to prove wrong can be a very powerful motivating factor. And I'm telling you what, Sam Darnold is going to have the game of his life on Sunday. 
You're going to have to look closer. You may have to even rewind the TV a couple times. But every time Sam Darnold throws a touchdown pass, he's going to look over at Robert Salah, and he's going to look at the Jets' sideline and go, hmm, look at me now, bitch. <laughs> and, then when, and then when Aaron Rodgers and then when Aaron Rodgers gets sacked for fourth and fifth time and he's limping off the field and, and Salah tries to hug him and Rodgers pushes him away like he did on that Monday night game or whatever, they're going to look at Sam Darnold on the sideline. Him and KOC are going to be high-fiving and back-slapping. This is coming to be like a Minnesota Vikings redemption tour this season. It is. Nobody huh? thought this team was going to be good. We all said they were going to be better than we thought. I didn't even think they were going to be this good this fast. But redemption tour because everybody thought, you know, he might have been making up some of this stuff in Miami. And then Tua comes out and says, well, he was a terrible human being. Uh, maybe, maybe it wasn't Flores. Hmm. Now, maybe Sam Darnold wasn't a bust after all. It was Kevin O'Connell that said, it's not young quarterbacks that fail NFL organizations. It's NFL organizations that fail young quarterbacks. And he's proving that right. That is going to be proven tenfold come Sunday. That's my intent. Yeah, baby, yeah! Justin Jefferson is currently eighth all-time on the Vikings receiving yard list in franchise history with 6,257 yards. He will pass Steve Jordan, Sammy White, and Jake Reed and move into fifth place if he gets 176 yards. When I start doing these milestones, you look at the games played by other people, yeah. they're like way more than Justin Jefferson. It's like he's carving apart the Viking record books, and he's only half, he's halfway to Chris Carter already, Ted. That's, like, that's incredible. Yeah, 6,257. He can move into fifth if he passes those three guys. He needs 176 yards. You can't say that's impossible for Justin Jefferson. Well, you never know with that guy. We'll see. He's now tied with Ahmad Rashad with 34 touchdowns. He passed Jake Reed last week, and wow. his next target is Kyle Rudolph, who has 14 more than he does right now, but I'm not worried about that. Well, that's about do it for episode 142. Don't forget to join us for the live postgame show. It'll come about high noon because the Vikings wow. start like at 8.30, 8.30 kickoff, man. That's going to be kind of weird. Bacon, eggs, coffee, and football, and then a ham sandwich in our live postgame. So for Drew, for Chris, for Ruby, I'm Ted. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you Sunday right after the Vikings game, right around lunchtime. Yeah, baby! I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, ribs. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, ribs. Chili, baby back, ribs.